Hello everyone and welcome to the Clockwork Cantina episode 109. I am one of your hosts, Josh Dono 2, and this is the other host of this show. That I can't hear talk, apparently. What? Daniel, are you, I'm DT3. Are you What's up, everybody? <laughs> What's going on? How are you all? Hope you all had a good uh good weekend. Uh, hey everybody. Sorry, I had a I had a late night, so I'm like not all here either. So, um, <clears throat> but we're here, we're here now. Sorry for the little bit of lateness. Um, welcome to the show, episode 109. We're gonna be talking about the Maltese Falcon, which we watched. Uh, it's an old classic movie yeah. from 1941. In the second half of the show, first half of the show, we got the usual stuff, the news, what we've been up to, all that kind of, all that good jazz. Um, sir. Um, so if we want to start off by talking about what we've been up to, DT, what do you got? All right. Um, what have been up to the past week? Um, a lot of Star Wars Galaxies. Still playing more of that. Uh, definitely playing, playing a lot more of that. Um, uh, Star Wars The Old Republic, the new update came out last week. Started playing that as well. That's been pretty good. Um, I'm looking forward to playing more of that as well. Yeah. Um, continuing our playthrough in Dying Light, I think we're, we're I think we're probably going to finish it up this week, right? Like I thought I we were going to wrap so. it up last week, but I think this week is is like we're honestly. I think I, th I think honestly, I'll be honest with you. I think we'll I think we'll do it. I think it'll be done tomorrow. Uh, I think when we're done, it'll be the end. I really do. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll see. I, 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 I yeah. It keeps surprising you though. It's like it's gonna end, right? And no, yeah, like, <laughs> it just no. keeps going. <laughs> keeps going. The, like the DLC, I didn't expect it to be as long as it is. And it's like, oh, here's an open world where you have fucking buggies traveling around everywhere. It's like, oh, okay, I guess. Um, which is, it's, I mean, it's been fun, but you know, this is surprising that it's like, oh, here's all this other. Like we're expanding upon the game, you know. Uh, watched the caught up on some episodes of Attack on Titan. I was behind on that a little bit. Caught caught up and watched that. Uh, watched the uh, the last three episodes of Box Machina as well. So that season one is over. Pretty good. I not knowing anything about Critical Role and all that stuff. I enjoyed it and, and the characters and all that. So. Definitely go and check that out if you guys haven't, uh, you know, have, haven't seen that. So, yeah. Mm. Recommend it. Uh, it's getting I watched season the season two. Yeah. I watched the uh, finale for Peacemaker. Man, I, I enjoyed this show more than I thought I was going to. Right? And, like, yeah, because I, I was like, all right, it's, it's DC. I'll check it out because I love DC and all that. And it's like, oh, it's a continuation of the Suicide Squad movie and all that. And. I just I, I like I liked it more than I thought I was going to, man. And then they had a cameo at the end there, and I was like, "Yo, that's kind of nuts, dude. That's that's pretty cool." Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm look I'm actually looking forward to a season two of that as well, because uh, I know because that uh, yeah that'll be, that'll be, that'll be fun. Uh, I binged all of the net the the Netflix the Cuphead show because it dropped on Friday, and they're like short. They're twelve episodes, but they're like fifteen minutes or less. So I just watched them all, you know. And it's fun. I uh, I recommend it if you love the art style and if you love like the old old school like golden age cartoons type stuff. You know, if you like that, you'll definitely have fun and enjoy that. So, so yeah. Um, played a little bit more Phasmophobia. Um, and then I watched some movies. So I watched Natural Born Killers for the first time ever. That movie was nutty uh i haven't seen that in woody years Harrelson. but that is yeah, a I, movie. it's fucking nuts i again i just watched it for the first time and woody harrelson is nuts in that and and fucking robert downey jr dude holy shit what a yeah what a what a role for him in that one that, that one's crazy uh and then i watched woodstock 99 which is the the, the documentary for the for night for the woodstock 99 dude that is a what a what a disaster that was what a mess what what a crazy fuckery that occurred there. 
Uh, yeah, it, it's crazy. It's called Woodstock '99: Peace, Love, and Rage. It was fucking bonkers. Um, watch Scream three and four because uh, I'd never seen those. And uh, you know, trying trying to catch up for in time for the for. I mean, I guess the fifth one is out already, but you know, now I can watch the fifth one because I watched three and four, so caught up on that. And then I wanted to watch uh, since since it came out, uh, the King's Man, which is uh, the prequel to the Kingsman movies, and I enjoyed it. It was it was a fun time. There was some stuff in there that I wasn't expecting to happen. I was like, oh shit! But then, like you know, if you remember some of the older movies, it kind of makes sense for the, some of that stuff to happen. But it was just like, oh man, I I did wasn't quite expecting, uh, uh, yeah. But but anyway, it was uh it was good, and uh, yeah, I I enjoyed it quite a bit. So I I, I like those Kingsman movies though. But anyway, yeah, oh, that's yeah. pretty much what I've been up to: movies, games, a little bit of TV, thrown all in there. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much been it. I, like I said, a lot of galaxies. Still gonna be doing that because I got I got to grind for some for some money in that game. But well, yeah. that's what I've been up to, and uh, <clears throat> and yeah, what what you've been up to the the past week there, Josh? Okay, <clears throat> here's what I got. I have been playing a lot of Star Wars Galaxies. Um, actually, more so, more of it toward the end of the week because during like the start of the week, it was just like I was kind of mad. I kind of got to a spot where I felt stuck, and then uh. And then I got a new ship, and everything kind of started falling falling into place again. And I was like, okay, now I have a have a goal again. So yeah. that's uh, what I need to do, get a new ship as well for both. My yeah, characters. which is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun getting a, a new ship when you can finally start messing with weapons and better armor and stuff in your in your Star Wars Galaxy ship. Like the game opens up a bit more. Uh, you get tougher. You can fight tougher enemies. More XP. More money. That type of deal. Which I'll probably be playing after we're done with the stream today. Um, so a lot of that, uh, we killed NK Necrosis, um, uh, which is yeah, like the, did. the Grievous little raid and like, it's, I, I want to say it's a raid, but it's more like a little, it's just like a mini raid because it's like the lockout for it is 30 minutes. I'm used yeah. to raids being locked out for like a week after you kill a boss, you know? Damn. Um, yeah. Also, like, I feel like if you have a good group in that, like the toughest part of that is trying to is getting there, mm-hmm. because like you have to traverse through caverns and shit filled with spiders. Because this is on Kashyyyk, you have to traverse through these annoying ass caverns where you could get lost if you don't know where the fuck you're going. It's true. Because like, because I got lost a couple times. I'm like, God damn it, dude! I got try to find my way back. And then the worst part is again, you have spiders chasing you, trying to kill you. And like you know, you can only heal yourself so much, and you know you, you can only sprint so much because then you're you know you gotta wait for it to to, to, to come back. But um, yeah, no, I mean it, it was like I said that that one is fairly as long as you got a good group and you got the buffs and everything, then you you're you're good. But um, yeah. As long as you can like survive that opening salvo like of attacks because like i think the boss is the boss and his like little mini dudes uh his magna guards i think they all use like the same they use like they use the same like resources you do like your energy and stuff um to use attacks and stuff at least i see them using it and it going down so if you can survive like their onslaught until they drain their power bars like the fight becomes just a tank and spank at a certain point as long as you can survive those early onslaughts. Which, to be fair, we, we lost people occasionally yeah. on those first first uh, on those first pulls, but if you can even losing people, as long as you can like hang in there and keep tough, you can you can do the fight pretty pretty simply with a uh, with enough people that are decently geared and buffed up. Yeah. Um But it was cool, it's a cool little fight. I, I got the ship, you got the ship too, right? Um, yeah, I got, I got the uh, the grievous ship. Yeah. Yeah, and then the, I got some weapons that I'm gonna try to trade it and and see if I can get like the bounty hunter sniper rifle. Maybe I'm gonna see if I can maybe trade somebody. I'll, I'll trade them both for the sniper rifle for the the bounty hunter. Um, yeah. If somebody's willing to do that, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, uh, 
Swotor also out. I haven't played that as much. I need to. I want to hop back in there. There's a lot <laughs> going on right now with, with there games. Is. So, uh, yeah. uh, with, and, with and there's other games that I want to try that I haven't. Like you know, <clears throat> I know everybody's playing it right now, but Lost Ark is something I want to try. But it's just, this I yeah. got you. We got other stuff going on right now. All I've done with Lost Ark is sit in people's streams and farm drops. <laughs> That's all I've done with it. I haven't, I haven't downloaded it. That. I don't even have it installed. I've just <laughs> been watching people's streams. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, I want to hop back in the SWO tour. I started a trooper that's using pistols, so that's pretty fun. Peacemaker finished up. Peacemaker. That show has. <laughs> I watched that show and was like, I'm gonna check it out. I don't know if it's gonna be good. That that show is way better than I thought it was gonna be. Like, and probably really more right than it has to be. Like, like I can't believe how good it is for what it is. <laughs> um. It's ridiculous. I mean, it's crazy at times, but it's also surprisingly heartfelt at times as well. Like shout out to James Gunn, dude. That's, that's yeah, that's, that's James right. Gunn, John Cena. I like that whole cast of uh, characters in that show. Like they're great. Do you really want to? Do you really want to taste it? Yeah. If you haven't seen Peacemaker, guys, go give it a shot. It's it's really good, and it's in the season yeah. two. Mm-hmm. Vox Machina. We've watched all of Vox Machina up. Finish that up fucking fantastic show I, even though i know what was gonna happen because i've seen the critical role um seeing it in animated form with with the actual like the actual voice acting in a professional setting which obviously the voice actors on that critical role show but like in an animated setting and in and, and having like the actual studio and all that stuff fucking fantastic uh cannot wait for the next season which i think is also confirmed out there um so yeah legend of vox machina awesome total war warhammer 3 i played a little bit of i played the prologue and i started a a chaos campaign with like uh the chaos dude and then i realized i fucked up and had to restart the campaign because i got just in a shitty position uh but enjoying that i intend to play more when i have time uh, Dying Light with DT. You guys have been coming to the streams. We appreciate you. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. We'll be finishing that up probably this week. Um, oh, yeah. And then I I also was there for Screams uh, 3 and 4, which I had seen 3 before, but I guess I've never seen 4. I thought I had seen 4. I have not seen 4, so I'm actually glad that we watched those because I hadn't seen 4. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it. That's everything I've been up to this past week, man. Hell yeah. Sounds good. Uh, I guess we're uh, ready to So if we want to hit them the news, news huh? we sure can hit that. Let's do it. What do we got first? Alrighty. So, for the first bit of news for the week, uh, for, the, for our game of news, uh, we have uh, a first gameplay trailer for Dune Spice Wars. Dune! All right, let's check it out. Let's check it out. Three, two, one, go. This is made by the guys that did Northgard, by the way, I believe. This is Arrakis, a world of sand and death, brimming with terrible dangers, only matched by the resources and secrets it holds. Of these resources, none is more precious and coveted than the spice. But whatever you hope you'll find here, you cannot be prepared for what's waiting for you. First, you'll need to survive. Then, try to understand the land. Rally local villages or force them into submission. Use them as outposts to develop your infrastructure. and set up the vital spice harvesting process. Then build a solid foothold to start your conquest. You will have to fight to defend what you have and take what you need, or rely on your cunning to achieve your goals through the arts of subterfuge, politics, or diplomacy. Arrakis is mine. 
Look at the Baron, man. He's huge. He's big, big, big man. But no matter who you conquer, manipulate, or destroy, you will never truly control me. Dune. 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 Uh, yeah, I think that looks really cool. Um, not a whole lot shown. I mean, they show like the maps, some of the units, and moving around stuff. Um, I'm super interested in that game because obviously I love Dune. Uh, I'm a big fan of the books and the movies and all that. So, um, yeah, it looks, it looks, it looks. I definitely see what they're doing with it when they're when they're like, oh, this is kind of like a little bit like Civ, but it's not completely like Civ because it's not. It does. It's not turn based. It doesn't look like it's it's uh there's definitely like a pause button up in the corner uh and and you're moving your units around so it's like a hybrid for for an rts and like a, a four four x game i guess that's what they call those but yeah that looked cool yeah yeah i mean those those typically aren't my kind of games like something like that i feel like i'd rather watch than play it myself so like, yeah i got gotcha. you you know there's like people out there friends out there playing it or if you play it or if you're to stream it or whatever i'll you know, i'll watch it that way but I'll definitely be checking that. Yeah. Strategy games are definitely in my wheelhouse. Like those are, I grew up on strategy games. The first games I played as a kid were strategy games because of the old man. So, uh, mm. so I I love that shit. It's like just it's in me because I've fl I've played them for so long, right? Like, yeah. If I had an if I had an expertise, if I was an RPG class and and had an expertise, <laughs> Josh's expertise would be strategy games. Um, but yeah, what do we got next? What do we got next? We have uh, the cinematic trailer for uh, the Old Republic, uh, yes. which again was dropped last week along with the expansion. It is a six minute long cinematic video, it's awesome. Um, and it is, yeah, it is very, very badass. Daniel's reacted to this, I reacted to this. It's on our YouTube, so go check those is. out. Sure uh, go, 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 actually yeah. has performed the best on any video i've ever done so uh, hey, there you go. uh so yeah let's check this out daniel if you want to count us down we can sync it up let's do it least. three two one play bioware i'm really glad they did a cinematic i didn't know if they were going to or not I know, right? Like, cause, yeah. like, cause it's like they, they usually always do one, but like we didn't, we we didn't get the sense that they're doing one this time. But like, here it mm -hmm. is. And they so usually good. do blur. This one's not a blur trailer. This is a. I think this is an ILM trailer, right? Hmm. I'm not sure. I didn't. I actually didn't know that. That's that's really cool. I want to say it. Either is. way, either way, it looks fucking awesome. Yeah. Yep, ILM did this. Cool. But the Force has chosen you. Cut homie's arm off, man. Get wrecked. Damn. I love his armor. His outfit looks cool. All, to be honest, all of their gear looks cool, man. I like everyone. I like what everybody's wearing in this. Yeah. That that poor Sith homie, man. He gets his arm chopped off. He gets stabbed. To the back. Damn. No, I don't. I don't think I'd want to fight Nagus. That's a big motherfucker. <laughs> oh. 
Oh no, Sahar is having visions. Mm hmm. I like that little mud horn, man, that she has. All right. It's so cool. No. The brother shows little connection with the force. Sahar. Just goes to show you how fucked up the Jedi can be sometimes, man. Yep. I guess I was getting thrown in the walls, man. <clears throat> well done, young man. Now give it to me. You could have saved my brother. What? Was I chosen by the oh. force? Or you? Now's not the time for that. <laughs> Do you know? the Jedi didn't deem worthy. Silence! Give it to me. Now, Padawan! I like how he's like, give it to me, and then just yanks it out of her fucking hand. Give me yeah. Like, bro. You can still find your brother. I've only ever protected you. You must trust me. Well, there he goes. That'd be, that would be awful. Tied upside down. That's how you know you're fucked, man. Yeah. Very well. Sahar. I'm sorry. Goodbye, Denom. Do. What a messed up situation if you're Sahar right here, man. Transition, so good. The music, so good. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, that's the, there. It is Star Wars: The Republic Disorder cinematic trailer. So good, man. It's very the easy to get sucked in. So easy to get sucked in and just watch it and not like say anything. Yeah. Like it's so good. I mean, because it's em. so fucking good. That's why, <laughs> man. Like it's, uh, I, I love all the cinematics. See, everyone mm -hmm. that they've done, I have enjoyed very much. Yeah. They've all been, they've all been so good, man. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, they just incredible, man. Incredible. But yeah, so uh, that 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 was released along with the uh, expansion last week, and uh, yeah, I'm 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 still behind story wise, you know, in the expansions. Uh, I eventually I will play through the one, you know, all of them, and then catch up. But you know, I'm still a ways away from that. But uh, yeah, eventually.
But that looks great. Those are always those always look good. So, I mean, just could you imagine if they made a Star Wars show like that, dude? Oh, I would. I'd lose Bro, it, man, it'd be amazing. I would love that, man. That was the thing that we talked about when Blizzard was in our good graces at one point. Uh, we were always like, man, these cinematics are so cool. I wish they'd do a movie or a show like this. And <laughs> yeah, I, I would kill for something like that. Even if it's just like a few episodes. Like, it doesn't have to be super long. Like, I know, I understand that shit's not cheap, but man, it would be so cool. It would be so yeah. cool. Like, come on. Come on. Miniseries me. Let's do it. Come on. It would be it would be fucking amazing, man. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> What's next, my guy? Alright, next up. We have a new studio that was formed. Uh from former which are three cyberpunk 2077 devs to and they're uh, they created this to develop the next generation rpg and they are calling this studio rebel wolves that's good that's a cool name uh, right i like it i think I, I think it sounds pretty uh pretty bad ace it's a badass name hell yeah yeah a new studio called rebel wolves has been formed by multiple former witcher and cyberpunk 2077 devs uh and its first game will surprisingly well, not surprisingly, be an RPG. Uh, they were. It was created by The Witcher Three game director Conrad. Uh, oh, man, I. I'm gonna say Conrad T because I don't want to mispronounce his uh, his his, his, his last name. Uh, who was also the head of production and secondary game director for Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, he envisions Rebel Wolves creating vibrant, wor- vibrant virtual worlds filled with emotions and unique experiences, while also leading a studio that puts the team first at all times. Uh, he said, "For all of us here at Rebel Wolves, video games are, were always something we felt destined to do, something ingrained in our DNA. Personally, I couldn't be happier to have banded together the friends with friends who share this passion. We're developing a video game. We like to play in a way that games should be made." Uh, we want to evolve the CRPG genre by creating unforgettable uh, stories and stirring deep emotions, all while sitting as a tightly as a tightly knit team united by a shared goal and ambition. Collectively, we envision Rebel Wolves as a place where experienced game developers can reignite their passion, where they can focus on their craft and pour their love into an amazing, ambitious title. We want to stay small and agile, a place where people know and care for each other. Um. So yeah, that sounds pretty cool to me, man. That does sound uh, cool. The, the name is cool, and seeing as how you know, former uh, Witcher and Cyberpunk people are working on it, then uh, you know that's. Uh, they wanna sounds... they wanna be a smaller, more cohesive unit, and yeah. uh, that seems to be like. Th- that seems to be more like the games I tend to play more nowadays. Like I like AAA games obviously but i don't play them nearly as much as i play like the smaller like double a's and like indie games nowadays as i used to so when i was growing up i was like man it's all about them triple a's i only play the blockbusters now it's like Uh no that's way it's like the opposite um i play all the indies and like the smaller games now for the most part um so The team, it sounds like they have a, a vision, a thing that they want to do and accomplish, and the, the right people to, to, to get there to what they want to do. So, exciting. Be, I'll be checking out whatever they come out with in the future. Mm-hmm. Also, we'll be very... Uh, as Palpatine said to Anakin at the end of Phantom Menace, we should watch your career with great interest. Mm-hmm. Uh, and speaking of Star Wars, we have a little bit of a exclusive developer diary for Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Oh, cool. Let's check this out. It's released a couple days ago and uh, f- due to the IGN Fan Fest. So whenever you're ready, Josh, let me know. We can press play. I have play. it open whenever you want right. to go. Three, two, one, go. I've 
been a massive fan of LEGO and Star Wars since I was very young. There's lightsabers, there's spaceships, there's weird aliens. It was just a Yeah, look at fucking size suit of noodles and Max Rebo. that spans all generations. I'm gonna make the jump to light speed. As soon as we started talking about doing a new Lego Star Wars game, the ambition swelled because all the characters fans, we love all the movies and to have the opportunity Give me that ring, bro. to tell the whole yep, saga that. from episode one all the way through to episode nine, we knew we had to take it further than we'd ever been. We started off by having regular meetings with Lego and Lucasfilm, discussing just everything about the visual design of Star Wars, what makes a Star Wars game, how we might integrate Lego into this game. They gave us access to all of their libraries, which was the greatest thing to be able to dig into. <laughs> the yeah, story throughout Lego Star Wars is incredible and filled with jokes and funny moments, because in a Lego game, we have freedom. You can use the humor and we can spin it. So Han Solo is still being Han Solo, but he might have a banana instead of a blaster or something like that. We knew we needed to refresh the game and get something that felt familiar, but reinvented. The systems, the frameworks we put in place to enable us to do that over like a hundred different gameplay mechanics and all the different systems that make up that game. Real-time processing on the voices. So when you pick up a helmet and you put it on, your voice changes to sound like you're a stormtrooper. Well, looks like you've got a That's stormtrooper cool. problem you should look into. We're putting a lot of emphasis on, on the lighting and the environments. We have something like 12,000 materials that were generated for the game, 20,000 unique models, and 26,000 textures. If you're a fan of LEGO Company's work, you'll be amazed at the resolution and the amazing work that the models team have done. We get to recreate all of these iconic designs literally brick by brick. We built the ships entirely out of LEGO bricks. So that's not just the exterior of the ship, that's the interior, so you can land inside these ships and walk around in an environment entirely made out of Lego bricks. If you were to build one of our capsule ships in real life, it would take millions and millions of bricks. We've designed some of the characters that don't exist as physical models. What we would do is we'd look at huh. the film reference and we'd take existing Lego creatures and characters that are similar, and then what we end up with is something that is as accurate as we could make it. Take the Bantha, for example. So it's just really true to Lego IP and it's really true to the film IP. We wanted an evolution, I suppose. So what we've done is try to keep what's familiar, but really add something a bit more modern in, a bit more fresher. One of the things we've done in this game is we've gone for a third person camera. With the blaster combat in the game, we really wanted to make it feel more visceral. Now when you use the blaster combat, we bring the camera down, we get into this like third person. Man, he's shooting a stormtrooper in the dick, that's really not okay. It makes you feel like more <laughs> in the action, which is pretty great. Using the force is a huge part of the game. The Jedi, the, the Sith, they all have this force power where they yes, can literally pick the objects force. off the floor and fling them about. We really took advantage of that force power that we haven't done in previous games. You can fly into space and there's like just interactions that will happen. Giant ships like a Star Destroyer coming in. You can try and fight it and you go defeat it and you can capture it and take it over. I think when we're making these games, we think about the fans a lot. So there's a few Easter eggs in this game, some stuff that we're really excited to get in. You can switch all the weapons so that it's mouth noises. So you can be like, <laughs> That's and of funny. of course, uh, you might have heard of a little thing called mumble mode. So mumble mode is basically how the old Star Wars games were. We had to rely on animation, expression, and these sort of mumbles that mimicked the speech. It goes, <laughs> so yeah, that's how the old games used to be. They knew it in talk, man. They were just together on a scale like this really makes it feel <laughs> like it's something special. This is the ultimate experience of going everywhere in the universe as whatever character you want and really being Manda Cody in Star Wars. R2. And I can't wait for players to see the hard and the work. Force, and the force, Mundo Vendor, 3PO. 
Obi Wan Grievous. They should be rightfully proud of. So much. Yeah, I can't wait for this game, man. There's gonna be so much to it. Yeah, it looks fun. So many characters, so much, so much silliness as the Lego games usually are. Too far away now. Very cool. Cool, sweet. Yeah, that looked great. Um, I look forward. To... I've never really played the Lego games other than like my nephew would be playing, and I just pick up a controller and run around and mess with him for a little bit, and then like mm -hmm. that's it. Um. So, but this looks great. This looks like a lot of fun. So, plus yeah, we um, love we love Star Wars. We do, we do. Okay, <laughs> what's next? Next up, we had a little bit of a. Uh... We had a little bit of a uh, um, kind of a, a a timer thing that was going on, right? That Capcom was doing, mm -hmm. and uh, ultimately it was revealed that they announced uh, Street Fighter Six, and this is how they did it with a little bit of a, a little bit of a teaser trailer here. So let's have a look. See, yeah. All right, three, two, one, go. Get your get your sandals on. All right, you ready? So there, there you go. go. Yep. Very quick. Very, uh, yeah. very, very, sure very muscly. <laughs> I mean, that's just yeah, that's a Street Fighter though. You know what's funny? Mm. You, you, funny that you say that. After the video ended, guess what? One of the fucking videos that popped up at the end. You know how like they show you a bunch of videos mm -hmm. that they, you know, when the video's over. Mm. One of the ones that I got was fucking pumping iron, dude. <laughs> the, Ar <laughs> the Arnold fucking. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's you want, funny, man. You want to get as jacked as Ryu? Come watch Pumping Iron with Arnold. Go watch Pumping Iron with Arnold. Come on, do it. Come on. It's at the end of the video. What are you waiting for? Oh, All right. Uh, anyway. Uh, but yeah, that's exciting for the folks that are in the Street Fighter. I'm not a Street Fighter guy. Never really have been. I've never really... I don't know if I've ever even played any of the Street Fighter games. I play like some of them here and there, but I I've never really been. Uh, I I don't I'm just not huge into fighting games, you know. No, like, like it was like, even as a as a kid, I was more into it because you know you have your cousins or your sisters or brothers, and like you go and 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 go over to their house if it's your cousins, like which is what it usually was for me. You go over your cousin's place and play like. I don't know, like, that's when you'd play fighting games, because they would have them, because you didn't get them, because you're not super into them. Cause you didn't, or you didn't have anybody to play with at home. Like, mm. um, like I was always into... The only fighting game I was ever into was Mortal Kombat. I know I've said that many times on the show, and in Discord. Yeah. Everybody knows it now, but that's, like, the, the one I would play. That was my choice. Out of all the many choices out there, uh, that was mine. So that that's the one I would get. But yeah, I'm not super into the street street fighter. All right, is that all we have, in DT? Uh, for gaming news, yeah. There, there is one little. It's a mini thing. Just, uh, just the Steam Next Fest is going on. So go out there and try you some demos if you want to, guys. Uh -huh. um, uh, you know, they do these. I, I like that they do this, it's, it's why I'm shouting it out. Um, you know, they always have the, the, the next fest where you can go and try out. There's usually a bunch of indie games on there. Like, there's a demo right now for The Wandering Village. I will definitely be downloading that and trying it out because I was gonna back that game on Kickstarter and I missed it. Um, but they have a ton of demos out right now for different things that you can try. Um, if we finish, 
If we finish Dying Light this week, I might just stream, like, trying out different demos for things on, on the Steam Next Fest, because that would be cool. Um, yeah, I mean, why not, right? Um, but yeah, that's not really necessarily a news thing, but I was throwing that out there for you guys that want to try it out. So we can Quite move on. Yeah. Didn't know that was going on. That's really cool. I think it just started today. Oh. Um, so that oh, yeah, be... I did. And it goes on until the 28th. Cool. Yeah, you got to uh, get a week. Try out a bunch of demos. All right. So that's all we got for the gaming news. We can uh, yeah, move let's, on. Uh, let's hit the next thing. Let's hit next. All right. So next up, TV news. Halo has earned an early season two renewal over at Paramount Plus. So the season one hasn't even come out yet, but it's already been renewed for a second season. Well, uh, the highly anticipated adaptation of the best selling video game already on its third platform and third showrunner doesn't premiere until March 24th, but it already has a season two renewal. Um, David Weiner will take over for Kyle Kill Killen and Stephen Kane as showrunner on the live action series starring Pablo Schreiber. Executive producer Justin Falvey of Amblin TV previously uh, revealed that Weiner was near a deal to lead the show for season two following the formal renewal. Uh, but yeah, we again, we haven't even seen, we haven't even seen season one. We've only seen trailers and stuff, but it already has a season two. So that's interesting. But I find that more now, nowadays, more often than not, shows are getting uh, renewed, like even before the first season is out, you know? Yeah. Which is the case for this one. So. I wish yeah. I wish I was in the business of like having all the info behind the what goes into like these decisions and thoughts like yeah. like they obviously have faith in this so they they've already got a season 2 i wonder yeah. what what numbers did they look at what determines that what what determines the success of something that's going to be a streaming thing uh, uh b before it's it even out kind of thing yeah, yeah. like yeah, yeah. that that that's kind of like the thing that i'm curious about i wish i had the knowledge of of how the because those are big time decisions. Those are million dollars to decisions. Um, yeah. Because that I imagine a show like Halo is not cheap to make. I imagine it's no. very expensive. Um, uh, so yeah, I kind of wish I knew that kind of stuff. But I mean, they seem to have faith in it, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm definitely gonna be checking out the show, even though I'm not the biggest Halo fan. Like, but a show might be really cool. Will be really cool. I hope. We'll see. Got anything more to add, DT? Uh, no. It's just uh, this is this is interesting, you know. I, I we'll see it. We'll see how the first season does. They also revealed that uh, that <laughs> Master Chief does take off his helmet in this, and you're gonna get to see Pablo's face. So, you know, it makes sense, I guess, for a TV Aww. show. But, uh, yeah, I know the I know, reason I they don't do are... it in games. They want you to be the chief, right? Like it's meant to be you. That's why they don't have him talk much in those other games. Well, boy, does he talk more in that fourth one? That <laughs> yeah, <play. laughs> hey, truth. But he don't. He don't never shut up in that game, <laughs> right? But I mean, but also I understand why it was just him and Cortana for the most for the most part, you know. Yeah. Whereas in the other games, you had like Johnson and you know, mm -hmm. other people, a lot of other characters anyway. talking. Yeah, but um. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Uh, not not too far along now. It's like about a month away, I think. About a month yeah. away until the show uh, premieres, so. Yeah, I think it we'll is. We'll see how it does. We'll, we'll, we'll check it out. Check it We're out. already almost done with February, dude. I feel like it was just yesterday that it yeah. started. <laughs> now here we are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, toward are, the we, end. Got, we got, we have literally in, in a week. In a week, it'll be, it'll be over, so. Anyway. Uh, another show that was renewed for season two was Peacemaker over at HBO Max. Peacemaker has been renewed for a second season. Season two of James Gunn's popular DC series Peacemaker is locked and loaded on HBO Max. Uh, Gunn will direct and write all episodes for the new season. Um, Gunn and John Cena announced uh, the news on social media. Uh, that... Uh, 
of, of the news and uh I saw there was there was something that I saw on Twitter that was like, oh, Bane is gonna be the the fucking villain for season two or whatever and 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 james gunn is one of those guys that like when he sees like rumors and shit on the internet he'll often like respond to them on twitter and like and he's like this is he didn't he didn't say it like this but basically he was like this is bullshit nobody knows what's going on not even me and i'm the one that's writing it you know so (laughs) i just thought that was funny man it's like i i just i think it's cool that he does that you know just to like so, so people won't like ex- have wrong expectations of what to expect when it's not even true, you know. Mm-hmm. So, so good for him on doing that, and uh, and yeah, um, that's yeah, that's just funny. But yeah, season two, uh, I'm 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 glad they're doing a season two because I enjoyed I season one. And uh, like I said, we, like we mentioned that up top when we were talking about how our, how our week's been, we uh, we both enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I just uh, I'm very curious to I like what they're gonna do with the season two, you know. So yeah, I enjoyed I'm also the, curious the where they go next. Well. Yeah, like where? Yeah, like where do they go from here? Yeah, you know? the whole the whole cast is great. Like Vigilante, uh, Economos, yeah. uh, Liotta, like Harcourt, like like, and obviously you know fucking John Cena. It's like, like the show is just great. Oh, okay, cast eagerly, great. Yeah, <laughs> eagerly. <laughs> uh, yeah. I saw a so man yeah, get hugged by an eagle. I mean, I thought it was yeah. a sign. <laughs> I love that show. <laughs> It's so stu- uh, it's so stupid, but like funny, man. Like, I love I it. It's so dumb. It's like it's like that dumb funny, yeah. That, yeah that, you know. that stupid humor, yeah. In some in some comedies, they have stupid humor, and it's just stupid and doesn't hit. But Peacemaker has stupid humor that actually hits and makes you laugh. Like I can't recommend it enough because just I wasn't even expecting it to be good. But anyway, yeah, that was uh. That's good stuff, and I'm glad they're doing a season two. So yeah, yeah, that's, same. I think that's, I think it's all we got to say on that. Um, <clears throat> the Last of Us TV show won't premiere until next year, according to a HBO executive. Uh, Casey Bloys, uh, who is uh. HBO and HBO Max chief content uh, officer uh, said that it's not going to air in 2022. They are still shooting in Canada. I imagine you will see it in 23. Uh, uh, Craig did Chernobyl for us, and he is an, a fantastic writer and director. What I've seen looks amazing, and I'm so excited for it, but it will not be in 22. While it's unfortunate that we won't see The Last of Us adapted this year, it sounds like everything is very much in production and won't. We'll and we'll be on track for next year. So for anybody out there expecting this show to release this year, it's not. It'll be next year. Yep. Um, but they're still working on it. They're still shooting on it. They're, 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 they're making it happen. They're doing the things. And, uh, yeah. It'll be, it'll be ready when it's, when, it, when It'll be ready when it's ready, you know? So that's cool. Um... We ha- next up we have a little bit of a, te- a, a tr- not not a teaser this is a trailer, a proper trailer for uh, the boys presents diabolical you know the animated uh, show that they're gonna be uh, doing over there. All right, let's open it. Yep, yep. So. When you're ready, we can. I'm ready. Let's play. All right, three, two, one, go. Uh, Over at Prime Video. The fuck away. It's a dog in it. Homelander, what made you decide to join up with Bob? Chance to use my gifts to help make so this is cool because it's gonna have a bunch of different animation styles for each episode yeah. or something. I think. Come on in. 
not like this can look bad to anyone. I'm not a pedo, by the way. I don't even have fingers. I'm not a goddamn pedo. John DiMaggio, I know, I know that voice when I hear it. Yep. As you can see, Amazon gave him his money. Dude, that guy has titties on his face. I didn't even see it. The idea is that the outer you will finally match the inner you. This this is gonna be wild, dude. Cause all the ridiculousness they can pull off in the in animation. All over your face. Here we go. Fire. Okay. Yeah, this is gonna be all kinds of fucking nuts. I understand your anger. The violence is never the answer. Fuck you, you Shut up. Look at all the names. All the names. Holy shit balls. Kill me. There's so much going on here. Yep. Oh, get right. Damn. James Fergie, what you put in that stuff? <laughs> Diabolical. All right. Interesting. Well, March 4th. That's really soon, too. Yep. Crazy. Crazy. Cool, cool, cool. Anyway. Uh, okay. Uh, over at Paramount Plus, there is going to be a Sonic the Hedgehog spinoff series uh, about Knuckles happening. So we don't even have the second movie out yet. It'll be out in April. But uh, Knuckles, the character who will be voiced by uh, Aegis Elba, will be getting a uh, in, the, in the second movie, we'll be getting its own uh, spin-off series over at uh, Paramount Plus. Um, and it will be uh, produced by Sega and Paramount and will launch in 2023. Um, so that's something. I wasn't expecting them to do a fucking spin-off show for... Uh, no. For you know, I for any of these Sonic characters, but you know, here we are. Knuckles is getting one. I have no thoughts. <laughs> I haven't seen the Sonic first and, one. Yeah, and then uh, you don't, and then you don't really know who Knuckles is, right? Uh, no, like not knowing the character. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's like I want to I want to contribute to the 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 brain tank that we're talking about here, but it's like I don't know what to say because I don't. I, it seems uh, cool. I mean, like uh, it's cool that they have faith in Knuckles, something, but like Knuckles is every, a cool character. Yeah. But I, mean, I also wonder, like everything has to be a giant franchise, I guess. Like it's it's. Well, uh, I, you know, you gotta have content for your for your streaming uh, services, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's just, it's just interesting. Like I, it, this this makes me wonder, like what else is on Paramount Plus? Because I honestly don't even know. Like I don't I don't, I don't have either. Paramount Plus right now, so I don't know what's on there. I had it for a little bit to watch Yellowstone <laughs> season four, uh, but I never w watched anything else but like the Yellowstone. Uh, like I know that eventually they plan on adding like uh, Avatar stuff on there, which is going to be very enticing to get it to get Paramount Plus because they're going to be doing a bunch of future Avatar stuff on there, you know. Um, and then yeah, but I don't, I don't, I don't know what they have on there right now. Like, I don't really know what's what's on there at the moment. Yeah, but they're making moves, man. They're making moves. That stuff on their on their on their. We're getting to the point where like every streaming service is gonna have something on there that I want to watch, and I'm, it's just gonna make me sad because I can't get them all, you know. Yeah. So that's a uh, that's a bit it's, of a bummer. It's it's all become like satellite and cable all over again. Uh, just... Yeah, I I I was saying this like a couple years ago, like. It's just gonna turn into cable all over again because everybody wants to have their own fucking streaming service, 
And you're going to have to pay for them. And there's going to be like bundles and shit where you can get, you know, it's like, come on, man. We're just doing a repeat of what fucking happened already before. So it's just it's bullshit, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What is next? Next up. Uh, Stranger ah, yes. Things is confirmed to end with its fifth and final season. So ahead of season four coming out later this year, they have gone ahead and confirmed that uh, season five will be the end. Which to me, this always made sense. I kind of feel like the plan was always to make it like five or six seasons, you know? And we're here now, so there it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that they have an end in sight because a lot of things get canceled before they get to get to their ending, unfortunately. Um, I'm glad that these guys have an end an end goal that they'll be able to wrap everything up and not be not be like left wanting more. I hope it doesn't. If they pull that shit where they're like, we'll have a different kind of Stranger Things show and do a big twist at the end, I'm going to be kind of like, oh, man. I'd like something wrapped up with a nice tidy bow at the end. Um, Yeah, it's just cool that they're ending it on their own own terms, you know? Like, uh, the the showrunners are ending the show the way they want to end it. Yeah. Um, because yeah, like you said, more often than not, a lot of these shows just get canceled, or you only get like one or two seasons, and then they just don't get anything else. You know, and and I I also want like, you know, I want Cobra Kai to have its ending too. So like they, when they start these shows, they obviously these ones in particular, Stranger Things, and I, I'm gonna say Cobra Kai as well. They're always they have a goal that they want to get to, right? They like they're like we want to do five or six seasons. We want to do you know, five or six seasons. And like, I feel like when you have a goal and you go to a company like Netflix and you're like, listen, this is what I want to get to. Um, it seems like they're more out to get you there than to cancel you early. As long as you're doing decent numbers. I feel like a lot of shows maybe just, I don't know if they wing it. I just don't think they have an end in sight. Whereas these creators have always kind of had an end in sight. Like, like, like they yeah. know we got, we got five well, seasons. We got six seasons, you know, that kind of thing. Well, they were saying that seven years ago, they planned out the complete arc for Stranger Things. Yeah, exactly. And at, and at the time, they predicted the story would be four to five seasons. So it pro- yeah, and, and there you go. It, it, it's proving to be true because it's <laughs> five seasons. So there you go. So yeah, I mean, this this is this is only this is a good thing, you know. We don't we don't need things to go on forever if they're gonna be shitty at some point, you know. That's kind of what was my one of the big reasons why I stopped watching The Walking Dead was just like I I love I dude I love the show when it first came out and everything, but over the past however many years, it just it got it, the quality just reduced so much that I just it it's mm-hmm. just I lost interest, man, because it was just not good. And I know that people have said that it's gotten better over the past couple seasons or whatever, but I just, man, there's, there's so much out there. Like, how do you expect me to stay with something for so long? Like, I, I, I don't have time to stick with things if they're not going to, you know, be good. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, I've had relationships you choose, end, end, end quicker than some shows, especially <laughs> walking dead. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah, that show's been going on for like twelve years now, dude. Yeah. Uh. So. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, what do we got next? Sorry, I keep getting distracted. <laughs> uh. Next up, we have. Uh, one last thing here, and it is that the first character in the new Fallout TV series has been cast. Oh, 
Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Walton Goggins is set to star in Prime Video's TV series Fallout from Kilter Films based on the games. So they are saying that uh, he's going to be playing a ghoul. That would make sense. Yeah. So he's, he's He's got the look. Yeah, I was just like, he's, he's got like the perfect look for a ghoul, dude. Like he, I don't like. It's, it's I, don't, I don't even mean that. It sounds like it's kind of shitty when we say it, but that's not. Oh, I know. Like he's got like, the right facial structure and was, things. Yeah, you know? there was like a picture that I saw, uh, like a side by side comparison between like a ghoul and him. I'm like that. That's like perfect casting, dude. Like <laughs> it's not meant to sound fucked up. It's just like he's playing a part, dude. He's playing a role, mm-hmm. and uh, he fits it. He, at least look wise, he fits it well. I'm sure he's gonna kill it too. You know. Acting wise, so uh, yeah, no, it's, it's it's cool, man. Uh, but yeah, the world of Fallout is one where the future envisioned by Americans in the late 1940s explodes upon itself through a nuclear war in 2077. The magic of the Fallout world is the harshness of the wasteland set against the previous generation's utopian idea of a better world through nuclear energy. Uh, so yeah, they're playing. They're saying he's going to play a ghoul. And uh, there's n- there really isn't a whole lot of other information on the uh, on the show itself right now. Like I don't, I still don't even know like where when it's taking place because we have so many Fallout games that I'm just like I don't know where this this show's taking. You know, yeah, place like now. is it gonna be in like man? They should they should do New Vegas <laughs> or you know or, or like any of those types of settings. I I don't know. Um, so yeah, we'll have, we'll have to wait and see. But I mean, I think Walter Walton, uh, Walter Walton Goggins is a good, is a solid choice, especially for uh, yeah for what they got him for in this. So that's yeah, man, good yeah. good good yeah. casting right there. It's pretty cool. Yeah, over pretty at Prime cool. Video. So uh, we'll see. They're uh, they're gonna begin production uh, sometime this year. So it ain't. So for those of you wondering, it's not coming out this year. They're beginning production on it. Um. Uh, so yeah, something to look forward to, I suppose. Um, but yeah, that is all we got for the TV news, though. So uh, okay, we, we can on. we can keep on can rolling. Head on over to the TV news, my friend. You so mean the movie, ahead movie and, news? Yeah, or the movie news. I, was, <laughs> I, I, I said that as I was looking at the notes. Yeah, I know. I got you. I do that shit all the time, bro. Yeah, I don't know the movie news. I'm not looking yeah. at it anymore. Movie news, damn it. All right. Uh, anyway. All right. Let's hit it. So moving on. Movie news. First thing we got here is uh, the Lord of the Rings anime movie has set a 2024 release date. The War of the Rohirrim will arrive on April 12th, 2024. Uh, so we talked about this uh, happening before, that they were doing an animated movie that was called, you know, uh, The War of the Rohirrim, and uh, yeah, we, it was first announced in June of last year, so I'm sure we talked about it then, but um, this movie is going to explore the uh, the Fortress of Helm's Deep. Uh, it's set hundreds of years, yeah, it's hundreds of years before The Lord of the Ring, The Two Towers, uh, and, it, and it will dive into the blood-soaked era of the mighty king Rohan, Helm Hammerhand, uh, Kenji Kamiyama, who helmed Blade Runner Black Lotus and Ghost in the Shell standalone complex, is directing. Um, That's cool. Rohirrim. This has a script from Phoebe Gittins and Artie Papa uh, Jorgu. Based on a story by Jeffrey Addis and Will Matthews, the duo known for the Netflix's The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance, which I still haven't seen that yet, but I, I'm, I'm, I've been meaning to check it out. I just haven't, I just haven't yet. Um, There's a lot of stuff out there. <laughs> there I have to check out. Play. I feel like I need to rewatch. I feel like I need to watch the movie as well, the Dark Crystal movie. I don't, I don't even know if that's still on Netflix or not. But I gotta watch the movie and then watch the show. I think because uh, mm-hmm. I think the show's after the movie. But anyway, I'm getting a little off, off topic here. Uh, I think the show's a prequel, actually, to the movie. Oh, is it? Oh, damn. Well, then maybe I have to watch the show and then the movie. I don't know. I want to. I want to say it is. We'll figure it out. Um, yeah, I got you. But yeah, so this is cool. I'm 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 all for uh, more Lord of the Rings and and Lord of the Rings animation. This I feel like something that hasn't really happened a whole lot. Yeah. 
So I'm I'm all for this. I think uh, at least I, not I hope, I not hope lately. For it to be good. Yeah, not, yeah, not, not since lady. they've had uh, not since we've had major old, uh, advancements in technology. <laughs> yeah, I know they had the old movies and shit back in the day, but uh, yeah, I, I yeah, I meant like more recently. Like, I feel like there just hasn't been a whole lot of Miller stuff, like in general. Like, there's been we've had what the Lord of the Rings trilogy like 20 years ago, then we had the Hobbit movies like 10 years ago, and then like the the and then after that we had like the the shadow of mortar games but like that's pretty much been it huh unless i'm yeah. missing something but anyway we're entering a new age man we're getting uh we're getting fucking uh the show and we're getting this animated movie so hell yeah hell yeah dude uh fuck it why not bring it all out animated i'll watch it i don't care i love lord of the rings stuff so Hell yeah, brother. All right. Um, next up, uh, we have uh, a Wonder Twins movie is in the works. Yes, the Wonder Twins from DC. Wonder Twin powers activate. They are they are working <laughs> on a movie. Form of unnecessary movie needed. Sorry, I'm kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> I just don't get it, but that's fine. Um, the Wonder uh, Twins, Josh. Come on, man. I, uh, <laughs> the great heroes, I guess. The Wonder Twins. Yeah. Uh, Where's my Booster so, Gold shit? Come on! You give me the Wonder Twins, no Booster Gold? What the fuck? So uh, Warner Brothers is activating the power of the Wonder Twins. They've hired Adam Sitzkiel, who worked on the upcoming Black Adam movie, to write and direct an original live-action feature for the HBO Max, uh, based on the two, on the DC characters. Um, Marty Bowen and Wick Godfrey, uh, whose credits do not uh, 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 excite me, but I'm gonna read them anyway. <laughs> the Twilight Saga. The Maze Runner and The Fall in Our Stars and Love, Simon will produce the project, which will be titled Wonder Twins. Uh, so, yeah, that's... Uh, I mean, listen, I, I, I love, I, I'm I, all about DC, so you know I'm, I'm, I'm going to be checking this out. And I and I actually like the Wonder Twins from the old, uh, you know, the old Super Friends. Uh, that's the only thing I know they're from, uh, to uh, be honest. So. So definitely curious to, to see what they do with this, and then they have, uh, you know, they they got the guy who worked who did Black Adam uh, to to write and direct uh, this one. So, I, I that that gives me a little bit of uh, a little bit of hope. It's about even though, the only shining light in comparison to all those other credits. Yeah, there. all the other all the other stuff. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we'll see, man. I mean, it, it's it's also going to be a, a, an HBO Max movie, so I don't think it's going to be like. Uh, like a theater one you know which mm -hmm. you know could, could be at, bad could be good we'll see looking at those credits makes me think that this movie is going to be for like the younger crowd Teenagers. yeah, yeah. Than, it than seems very like for, teenage, for, for uh, moi. yeah i mean we'll see man i don't know well i i think i think i won't get a good idea of what it's going to be like until we see like a trailer or something uh because yeah i agree that those credits don't like I said, well, as I was reading them, they don't really give off a whole lot of hope. But uh, yeah, I'm a DC guy. I'll check it out. You never but... know. You never know. <laughs> well, so. I'll check out the first trailer at the very least. And depending on that, will determine how much I'll be into it or not. Uh, yeah. I don't, do I want it to fail? No. I want it to succeed because I want my Booster Gold movie at some point. God damn it. Uh, you know, <laughs> like, so. Booster Gold. <laughs> They do the one to right. they don't give me booster gold. Well, I'll be salty as a well, All right, moving. They on. are doing what they are. What 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 is happening though is that they're doing a uh, Bioshock movie over at Netflix. Is this gonna be a live action thingy or an animated uh, thingy? Bioshock movie is in the works over at Netflix. Take Two Interactive and uh, Netflix have been working on a screen rights deal for close to a year now. Hmm. And uh, no writer or filmmaker is on board at this time. The partnership has been in the works for almost a year. But um, they've tried to make this the movie in the past. 
and obviously we have we haven't had much luck until now. Uh, originally, uh, they wanted to do a movie with Universal and Pirates of the Caribbean director Gore Verbinski. I feel like I remember that. But uh, but two issues arose that would make that would follow the project for the next decade: budget and an R rating. Rubinsky and the subsequent subsequent filmmaker Juan Carlos uh, Fresnadillo butted heads with the studio, even getting as close to months from shooting one iteration before the game's makers pulled the plug. Um, so yeah, we'll see. I mean, it it it, it doesn't it, obviously there's no information other than like they've been trying to get this going on for a long time, but budget and Braiding and you know people collab, you know development hell pretty much is what's been happening with this movie. Mm. But uh, yeah, I I would have I would have you were asking if it was going to be an, a live action or animated. I would assume that it's it's live action. Yeah, it seems it, it seems action. to be uh, that, that that's what they're going to go for. Uh, so we'll see what they end up if doing. It, uh, if they can pull uh, it off, it could be amazing. A, you yeah, know, Bio, like... Bioshock is a cool is a cool world to. Uh, it's a set, you know, it's a to, neat to, setting to play around in. So it'd be nice if they could actually make something happen. You know, there's a reason that game was a massive hit, man. Like, yeah, I mean, I like the Bioshock games. I played all three of them, and they're they're, they're fun. Man. Look, there's, there's always a lighthouse, man. There's always a... the lore and the setting and all that stuff. I I love, and it's a damn shame we haven't had a Bioshock in quite a while, too. Well, you know, like, yeah, because I would love to hop time. hop back in and play another one. Um, it's been almost ten years, dude, since the last one. It's crazy. crazy. I've I've played, I played the first Bioshock, and then I played like the third one. I I skipped the second one for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know how that happened. Um, yeah, I mean, like it's it's like a lot of people consider it to be the weakest one, but like I played it, and I had fun with it, man. Like it was, it was it was cool still, you know. I don't know what happened where I missed it. I don't know if there was just something else and I and it was just too much and I just missed it or what. But I love the BioShock. The universe for BioShock is really fucking cool. And that first game is something real special. Like it really is. So if they can pull this off, you'll have a hell of a movie. Um so I hope they do pull it off cuz I want a hell of a movie. I you know, like Twist turns music atmosphere. Bioshock has everything that you could want. Um, so don't fuck it up for the love of God. <laughs> Cause you could make so much money if you do it right. Yeah. Indeed, indeed, man. Yeah, I, I hope I hope for it to do well. I hope they, they pull it off because uh yeah, like Josh was saying, if they do it well, this could be pretty badass. So let's hope that they uh they, they do it justice. Um but yeah. I'm, I'll be curious to who they like cast for this movie, you know. But anyway, we're not at that point yet. We'll we'll see. But it's pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Um, next up, uh, we uh we often talk about the uh, Christopher Nolan movies and on here and 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 you know we've been talking we've been keeping up with the casting news of his newest movie Oppenheimer. Yeah. Uh, and we have some new news. Uh, the Boy Star Jack Quaid has joined the cast of Oppenheimer. This movie is gonna be stacked. Dude. It's absolutely stacked. It's already stacked. There's so yeah. many people There's in so this many movie. Mm-hmm. So, as it says here, the A-list ensemble already includes Emily Blunt, Matt Damon, Robert Downey Jr., Florence Pugh, Rami Malek, Josh Hartnett, Killian Murphy, and now fucking Jack Quaid joining the cast. Like it's crazy, dude. What's the budget for yeah. this movie? You gotta pay all these people. I, know. <laughs> like... I, I, I don't know what it is, but fucking, I mean. It's a Christopher Nolan movie. They they let him do whatever he wants, I guess, right? So this gonna be really expensive. Oof. Either that or somebody's taking some pay cuts just to be in a, in a Christopher Nolan movie. Uh, but yeah, I'm 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 looking forward to this. I'm, I'm, su- I'm super in interested in it because of everybody that's yeah. in it. Yeah, I'm I'm very I'm I'm definitely want to check out the movie. Uh, cast is looking really really good. I still haven't seen Tenet, like I said. I need to check that out. That's his like latest movie that I haven't seen yet. I know it's on HBO Max. I just gotta, I just gotta watch it one of these days. I'll probably watch it within the next week. Maybe, maybe by the next, uh, the the next uh, um, Cantina, I will have, uh, I will have seen it. So, we'll see. Um, but yeah, uh, very cool. That movie is uh, adding a bunch. 
of names. Indeed. Um, the Quiet Place Three is happening, and it will debut in 2025. Which you know, I I say that number, and it feels like it's for like so far away, but it's only three years away. Right. <laughs> I, remember, I, remember, known. <laughs> I know there was there was once a time where I'm like, man, imagine fucking. I remember like years ago, just thinking back, like, oh man, 2020 is so far away, dude. We're gonna have flying cars by then, right? <laughs> right. I mean, shit. Back to the Future promised me a hoverboard by now, bro. Like, what? What the mm-hmm. hell, dude? That sucks, dude. What? What? What a di- what a disappointment. Real life has has been, you know. Compared they to were right. Movies. <laughs> hoverboards. Best we can do is pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> oh god uh, best yeah, we could never... do is post-apocalyptic <laughs> that sucks man oh my god anyway, before we go down that rabbit hole let's <laughs> yeah let's down. move on <laughs> so yeah quiet place 3 is happening uh <laughs> viacom cbs announced uh, that it'll be happening it, it'll be a, it'll be the third one they are they are working on a spinoff movie for the quiet place universe but uh it'll that'll be releasing next year september 22nd 2023 it's based on an original idea of John Krasinski's, uh, though details are being kept secret. Um, but they are working on a third one, and that'll be happening, like I said, in 2025. I thought the second one was okay. I like the, the first one's... The first one was great. It was yeah. fantastic. Second one was okay. I don't know if, about a third one, but I mean, whatever. I'm sure they can probably come up with something worth watching. Yeah. All right. Next up. So we know that PlayStation Productions is going to be making TV shows and movies and all that, right? Mm. So they have officially revealed their PlayStation Productions animation that will be appearing at the beginning of their movies and stuff. So. Ah. Uh. Starting with Uncharted, this when you watch the Uncharted movie, this will be what will pop up in the in the little intro. So let's play it. It's let's a, play it for you. Twenty second animation. So again, like I said, this will be at the beginning of all their movies and stuff. So starting with Uncharted. So here we go. Three, two, one. There's an Aloy. There's a Leviathan axe. There's Nathan Drake. There's Jin Sakai. There's everybody all together. PlayStation Productions. I think it's pretty cool. I like it. Yeah. Obviously very Marvel inspired, but yeah, it's cool. Um I I I think it's I think it's neat. Now we just need a good movie to put it in front of. <laughs> no, no offense to that uncharted movie. Uh, I know, I know that Uncharted uh, movie. I have, I have not heard good things about. And to be honest, like it didn't look good from the trailers and stuff. So mm-mm. it's unfortunate, man. It's unfortunate. Um, but yeah, that's a cool little uh little intro for 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 the PlayStation production, bro. Um, the last piece of thing that I have here. Is that there is a new Star Trek movie in the works, and it is gonna be reuniting uh, uh, Chris uh, Pine's crew. So the old, uh, you know, the 2009 movie, uh, Into Darkness, and Star Trek Beyond that trilogy, they're they're, I never they're saw running it back. Beyond, um, I did see it, and from what I like, from all the Star Trek people that are like actual Star Trek fans, because I'm not really a Star Trek person, like I. I the only the only real like Star Trek that I've seen is there are these movies like though that trilogy gotcha. you know the you know, and I've seen like a little bit of like Discovery and some other stuff here and there but like I've never really been a Star Trek guy, um, but from what I remember the Star Trek Beyond to a lot of the like the the, the true you know Star Trek people fans is that uh, Beyond was the one that was more like Star Trek than the other two. Hmm. Like it was, the, it was the truest, the closest to Star Trek was that last one. Um, because the other two, I guess, especially the the middle one, I guess, felt more like Star Wars to people than it did, did Star Trek, you know. 
which yeah. makes sense because you know jj abrams and all that you know which is it was before he did star wars so he, i guess he must yeah. have been like oh well i'm making i'm i get he at the time he didn't know he was gonna be making star wars he's like well i'm gonna make these star trek movies you know more closer to star wars because that's what i like you know but uh you know all the Star Trek people remember. are like, that's not, that's not what we want. We want Star I know Trek. That's, and, I know that's yeah. been said a million times. That it's like J.J., it was kind of like his his Star Wars because he didn't think he was ever going to do a Star Wars. Um, yeah. And then, you know, we saw how that worked out. Uh, uh, yep, sure did. So, I, I like the first one. I'm okay with that second one. I need to see Beyond. I haven't seen it. so. Uh, I remember liking all three of them. Like it's been a while since I've seen the, uh, like the all of them actually. I was gonna say uh, the the second two, but it's been a while since I've seen all of them. Mm. And uh, yeah, I, I I liked them enough. Like again, I'm not really a Star Trek guy, but I I, I liked the uh, Star Trek O Nine Into Darkness and uh, Beyond. They were all they were all decent, you know. Like I thought they were they were enjoyable films. Yeah. So I'd be curious to see what they have planned for a. Uh, for a fourth one with this crew because i know that a while like a couple of years ago they were planning on bringing back uh or in 2018 it says here yeah they were negotiating with chris pine and chris hemsworth to bring him back because if i don't know if you guys remember but chris hemsworth was his his dad in the first movie yep uh back in the 09 movie and uh With that fell time, through so they have time travel doing shenanigans it. and then in the meantime Star Trek, like there hasn't been a Star Trek movie since then, um, and they've been trying to do stuff. Like I know Quentin Tarantino was wanting to do a Star Trek movie. Uh, Noah Ho- Noah Hawley was trying to do one, that never moved forward. So there's been they've been trying to make movies happen, but it's just in the meantime it's just been living on TV. Um, but uh, yeah, they're planning on doing a, a, a new one, and it's uh, planning on being in theaters in December twenty second, twenty twenty three. So end of the year next year. Um, so we'll see what they do. We'll see what they end up doing. I, I like I said I like the, the the trilogy that they did before. So if they can keep it kind of to that level, then I'm sure I will enjoy it as well. And I like the crew they have for this movie. Like Chris Pine's cool. I love Zoe Saldana. Uh, Carl Urban's great always, and you know John Cho's cool. And then Zachary Quinto is Spock is is good. So I, I I like that crew that they had. So yeah, I'm all for it. I'm in. Why not? Fuck it. Do something with Star Trek. Yeah. You just gotta sit in there. Go go do something fun with it. But uh, that'll do it for our movie news, unless you got anything else there. I'm I have nothing. So we can right. take a break, because I need one. Do it. Yep. Uh, we will come back in the second half of the show. We'll talk to Maltese Falcon. We watched it. We'll give our thoughts on it. Um... Uh, I don't know how long that'll be, so this might be a shorter Cantina episode, which should be... Hey, that's fine. It's the way it be sometimes. Uh, I'll put some music on. We'll take a break. I'll run some ads, which I appreciate you guys sticking around through those. And we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere, guys. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are back with the second half of the show. We're going to be talking The Maltese Falcon, a classic 1941 movie starring Humphrey Bogart. Um, I have the trailer pulled up because I thought, oh, that'll be fun to, to show yeah, off. Show, show, uh, show the people's trailer. Before we get started here, in case you, in case, in case, in case in place. you haven't uh, ever watched any of these classic movies, this this ought to be good. This ought to be, I was, I, I, I played like the first second of it. Um, and it, okay. the, the, it looked great. So let's check this out. Come closer. I want to talk to you. I'm going to tell you an astounding story. Uh, for those on audio, you're, you're, the you're the they can hear it too, yeah? Yep. 600 years okay. before I have, has I have unmuted. The mystery of a fabulous Excellent. wealth under its grotesque wing. I could tell you a thousand tales of the men and women who have hunted this evil bird. But every story has the same ending. Murder. Listen, these incredible people, all consumed by their passionate greed for the Maltese falcon. What have you ever given me beside money? Have you ever given me any of your confidence, any of the truth? Haven't you tried to buy my loyalty with money and nothing else? What else is there I can buy you with money? (laughs) 
Who is this man? <laughs> and ladies are hobby. <laughs> He's as fast on the draw as he is in the drawing room. Who I won't play this app for you. Humphrey Bogart as the most ruthless lover you've ever met. I haven't lived a good life. I've been bad. Worst than Mary Astor is the most exciting woman he's ever met. <laughs> we were talking about a lot more money than this. There are more of us to be taken care it's of. It's the Shiel Hammett's greatest man. novel, The Maltese Falcon. Falcon. Here any minute now, talk. Oh, how can you accuse me of such a terrible? This isn't the time for that schoolgirl act with both of us sitting under the gallows. The Maltese Falcon. This music's so dramatic. Right. Uh, so that, that is the trailer for the Maltese Falcon. All right, so we watched this movie there you go. Uh, last. I watched. We watched it last night. Uh, uh, there, there's so much going on. It's like we need to. We need to get this done because uh, for the show. Uh, Another World War Two era movie, yeah. As you can see there with the uh, the trailer, man, I I don't often watch old movie trailers like this. I, watching that makes me want to go back and watch like like other like trailers from that era at the time, or you know, just just older movies. You know, you know what I want to make a comeback. I don't so. want fucking movie posters like this again. I have it up on screen here. I love these posters. I like them. I I, I like cool. I love these old school style posters. Where are these at? If I was a movie maker, I'd be bringing this shit back. I'd be like, listen, I want the old 1940 style movie posters. Um, yeah, but, yeah. I mean, I, I, they look good. I I agree. I I like that style of poster. Instead of like nowadays, posters are just like a CG Photoshop, right? Kind of sort of thing that they do. Yeah, like like my like my favorite style of posters are like the like the like the Drew Struzan type of stuff that's like you know drawn and, and you know all that kind of stuff. But those, yeah, those the one that you just put up, I like that style too, man. It's, it's I love those definitely. Uh, definitely, it 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 kind of I don't know. It's just a it's a good like I almost want to say like vibe isn't the right word, but like. It just it has like I don't know I don't know what the word for it is but like it just they're 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 good they're good to look at you know like I don't know yeah I like it looks good on the wall they look good all right they look good so we we watched this Daniel did you like the movie did you like the Maltese Falcon I did I did like the movie I, I also like the movie. enjoyed the movie um, so I didn't realize that it was also your first time watching it yeah. Yes, this is the first time I've seen the Maltese Falcon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I've never I, seen this. Before. Yeah, so originally when we, when we watched it, I thought you had already seen it, but then you're like, then you had. It's like, oh shit, this is new for both no, of us. No, I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so much like you, I I want to go back and watch some of the classics that I've never seen, and the Maltese Falcon is definitely one that I've I, I feel like I've heard about since I was a kid, like, and I didn't realize how like, um, so after we finished the movie, I went and I was like. How popular was this movie back in the day? This movie was a smash hit. Dude, this movie was made... It had like a budget of $375,000. It made mm -hmm. almost $2 million at the box office. Like, critically, wow. it's much beloved. I guess I just didn't realize how like popular it was made back in the day. But apparently this movie yeah, I mean, was, for, was huge. For a 1941 movie to have made, for, to have made tw $2 million, you said? Mm-hmm. That's crazy. 
It's like 1.8 million, almost almost 2 million. Um, Damn. Humphrey Bogart said this is like his favorite movie of his. Um, and, mm. and, and I was looking, because I always go and I, I try to learn more about the movie. After, I, I do this with any movie. Modern movies, old movies. I always go look up trivia on IMDb. I always read like the critical uh, reviews and stuff like that. But like, Everybody on this movie had a fantastic, fun time making it. Apparently, they were playing pranks on each other throughout the whole movie. They were just had, oh, wow. they just had a good time making the Maltese Falcon, which was uh, John Huston's first director movie, directed movie, by the way. Um, cool. Uh, so yeah, and it was based on a book. Um, we follow the character played by Humphrey Bogart of Sam Spade. Who is a private detective uh, with a partner named Miles Archer? Um, as they get approached by this client, and and murder and mystery and hijinks ensue. Uh, uh, one thing about these older movies is that they're they're not as long as like modern day movies. Like this movie's only like oh. an hour and forty minutes. Um, I kind I kind of like that though. Like I it, do too. It, like it, it's, it's, you know, not every movie needs to be like three hours long or whatever, man. It's fine. Well, here's the thing with these older movies. There's no fat in there. There's always something happening, right? There's always something going on, almost. Uh, there's always a, a, a conversation happening. There's always some sort of action happening. There's always something happening. They they make use of that hour 40. Like, yeah. there's a lot of stuff jam-packed in it. Um, there's also some really funny moments. There's some punches thrown that are like... Oh, dude. <laughs> crack me the fuck that, up. That I was going to mention... Just I, I don't know if this is how it used to be back then or is something they just did in the movie or something, but the fact that they would just you just walk up to somebody and like slap the shit out of them or you know, smack <laughs> the shit out of them. It, just, it cracked me up every time it happened, dude. Like yeah. I, I, I I'm sure it wasn't meant to be funny, but that's just hilarious. Just the fact that they would just walk walk up to somebody and smack the shit out of them, dude. It was so funny, bro. Like, oh my god. Like, uh, uh, I think uh, Humphrey Bogart slaps a, a male character. He's like, when you're slapped, you'll take it and like it. Like, that's one of the yeah. lines he said. And it's, like, <laughs> so funny. Like, he sunned his ass, dude. He's like, come here, son. Let me beat the shit out of you. Uh, like, that's so funny, dude. And, and obviously at the time, I don't think they meant it to be funny. But when you watch no, it yeah. in modern day and watch it's it hilarious. back, it's like, it's like a G moment. Like. Fuck, dude. That's like, oh my god, it's so. And then like, and then like when he steals the dude's two guns and he like fucking stares him down and he's ha as he's like handing it over to I think Casper, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and he just like stares him down like this this little punk ass. You shouldn't let him hold hold guns, man. Like he, what he, he's gonna hurt himself or something. Anyway. It was oh man. Fucking... I care. <laughs> I'm gonna play a little clip. Of, yeah. uh, we this was during the movie. Uh, this is this is one of the punches. This is like two of the punches I get shown, and they're really funny. Like we're, we're gonna show it really quick here, and probably get the movie cl the clip stream claim. But who cares? Like he he punches him, turns and punches him, and then he just he just gives him a little 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 love tap out cold. Oh my god, it's so funny to me. Um. <laughs> uh. But yeah, I I I I enjoyed this movie a lot, and I can't wait to watch more of the of the classics. But yeah, we're following the character of Sam Spade, who, by the way, as a character, is like one of the most chaotic characters I've ever seen in a movie. To be to be honest with you, like, like <laughs> he he does sh shit without like yeah, so like this is crazy. Yeah. He's a private detective in San Francisco. Uh, Sam Spade, played by Humphrey Bogart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he's just... He's like all over the place, man, in this movie. It's like, damn. I think Josh described it perfectly. Yeah, he's just, he's just chaotic as hell, man. It's like, what the hell, dude? The whole time I was watching him, I was like, this guy would be great in a D&D &D game. He's like a D&D &D player. Like, he does... He's right. like... He's the epitome of... He doesn't plan anything out. He reacts in the moment and comes up with plans on the fly. Like when he's talking to the fat man, the, there's a character in here that they call the fat man. And it's like their first meeting. And he's like, like talking about the Fal the Maltese Falcon and trying to get it. And he has it and all the negotiating prizes and stuff. And like he literally 
Like, the fat man isn't doing what he wants, so he pretends to be angry, throws a glass down, and, and like, storms out of the room. And, like, as he's walking down the hall, he's just smiling. He's smiling because he's like, yeah, I got out of that. Like, that was, that was clever. Of, that was clever of me to get out of that. He's, like, smiling. and Like, he's just so chaotic in his, like, moments and planning. It, it, it's... It's the movie's a lot of fun, um, but yeah, his his partner Miles Archer gets murdered early in the movie. It's in the opening. It's like in the opening five minutes, so I don't feel bad about spoiling yeah. that. Um, uh, and that's kind of what drives Sam. And even at the end of the movie, he's like, "When you when you when your partner gets killed, you got to do something about it, even if I don't like him." Like, I was like, I respect that about that character. He has like mm. this this honor. Like that, he yeah, even though he doesn't necessarily cool. like Miles, he's like, he's still he was still my partner. Uh, I still have to do something about it, so I'm not a shit bag. Like, yeah. Um. So the character of Sam Spade is is very very interesting. Also, when I <laughs> when I realized his last name was Spade, I was like, oh, this must be the Spade brothers' great 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 grandfather from fucking from Heels, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Heels, yeah. yeah. Um. Uh, but yeah, the character of of like out of the all the out of all the characters in this movie, and there's a lot of them, and they're all different and very, un- in my opinion, very unique characters. Like they're all different. Like, oh my god, Peter, uh, Peter Lore, I think, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, Peter Lore is Joel Cairo. Uh, that, when he does, that guy... when he goes in, <laughs> at the end, he's like crying, <laughs> bro. That shit was so the funny. Ambo love, bro. Oh, the ambo cry, yeah. bro. It was so. Cry, yeah, you uh, yeah. guys, please go watch the Maltese Falcon if you can. It's on HBO <laughs> Max. Guy was the... That guy was quite the character, man. I was like, this guy. This, there's something like from the way he talked and then just everything. I'm like, this guy. There's something going on here with this dude. Like he's, he's, I don't know. Which, by the way, he's in Casablanca. Peter Lorre is. He's he's very early. He's in the first part of like the Casablanca movie. Humphrey Bogart yeah. was in Casablanca. I think the guy that played the fat man is uh, in Casablanca. Let me let me double check. Caspar Gutman. Yeah, he's in Casablanca. A lot of the people in this movie were also in Casablanca. Like the next. Uh, the next year, because I think Casablanca came out after this. I want to say. Um. Well, I think, yeah, this I'm this was uh, before Casablanca, right? Yeah, I believe it. I believe Casablanca was the very next year. Um, yeah, Casablanca was forty two. Yeah, so yeah, it was it was it was like the year before. Yeah. Did you know? By the way, they tried to make a sequel to this movie that didn't happen. Um, I didn't know that. They did. They were they were trying to make because it was such a hit. They tried to make a, a Maltese Falcon sequel, but everybody had to got got tangled up in other movies and stuff, so it just never happened. Um, and it's based on a book. I didn't even I didn't realize it was based on a novel, uh, by a a, a person named uh, Samuel Hammett of all people, the Shell Hammett, mm-hmm. Samuel the Shell Hammett, who was a Pinkerton detective. And apparently the characters are based on people mm. that he had he had run into or known in during his uh, time as like a, a Pinkerton detective. Um, Interesting. So like the Peter Lore character was based on a on a character the the Wilmer the the fucking uh, guy with the guns um, uh, was based on like a, a petty criminal that he had known. Uh, hmm. Uh, Which, I feel like every character in this movie, every actor that they cast in a role, they have such a unique look about them. Like, they all look massively different from each other, if you think about it. Like, uh, Humphrey Bogart is obviously Humphrey Bogart, but Peter Lohr has, like, this... He has this look about him. He has this voice this, in, in his face that's like, that, that person yeah. is a very unique character. Gutman! Uh, uh, Sidney Greenstreet, who plays Casper, Caspar Gutten, Gutman... Uh, is obviously a very large man. They call yeah. the fat man. Um, uh, the uh, 
Mary Astor is obviously Mary Astor. Uh, and Wilmer, the, 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 the gunman guy, uh, also has a very unique, like, he's a shorter guy. He always walks around in this coat with his guns. Like, every character in this movie is just, just feels unique and so different. Uh, for some reason that I don't feel like happens a lot. And I feel like a lot of characters in modern day movies look a lot alike. Like, they're all big and buff and superheroes. And they, they yeah. look a lot alike. Like the... a lot, There's a lot more... Uh, in, in the movies nowadays, there's a lot more attention to the physique of, 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 of the actors and whatnot. Whereas back then, it's just like, yo, acting. You got the skills? Yeah. That kind of thing. Um, yeah. And honestly, I, I think that's what makes some of these... I, I say this whenever we watch a classic movie or, or anything that involves a classic thing, because I think you can learn something from everything. Like, there's things to be learned from these old movies. Like, this is a mystery that you are you are in Sam Spade's shoes a little bit as he tries to figure out what the fuck goes on and who killed his partner and what is this about this Maltese Falcon? What What's the whole story here? Like, it's a great mystery. And if I was like a and d DM trying to plan a heist or something for like my players, I would watch the Maltese Falcon because it's very good at having like a mystery of giving them something to like, like solve. Like everything in here, I always compare everything to D&D because I, I, you base it on things you the, like, right? The, the mind of a DM. Yes. Yeah, you base it on things you like, right? So like they talk about how the Maltese uh, Falcon is stolen from some Russian, some Russian guy that has it and... and Man, that's a D&D game on itself. The heist, the, to go hawk the, yeah. the, the, the Maltese Falcon and, and get it shipped over. And then the whole crime lord trying to buy it. And, and just and so so many things. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what that's what's cool, man. It's just like you, you could watch something like this and just get ideas for other things, you know. Because as we say all the time, you know, if, like particularly, especially for like, uh, like D&D, as you said, you take from the things that you like or you are inspired by, you know, so it all makes sense. Mm hmm. Um, as we were watching and the characters would say things. So goddamn was language different in 1941, because oh, my God, they say some words in here that I'm it. like, I don't know what the fuck this means. <laughs> like, who's cracking Foxy? What's cracking Foxy mean? Like, it's it's basically like cracking wise, being a smart ass, being cunning or, or like a fox. But I had to, I literally had to look it up to be like, what the fuck does this mean? Um, uh, we already talked about when you're slapped, you'll take it and like it. What a, that might be my favorite line of dialogue in this movie. It's super funny. Um, uh, like there's so many lines in here. Like here's a line that Sam says to says to another character. He says. The cheaper the crook, the gaudier the patter. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. I, 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 so language is so, so... This just shows you how much language changes over the years. Um, yeah. Or, or, or... I don't know. Uh, I, it's, it's... No, yeah. Need, there, there was a few lines in here that was like that. I'm like, what? Like, okay. I, I wish I could give you guys... I wish I was an educated man on movies and, and, and super, like, into the history of the movie and, and had a had a breakdown for you on, on just... So I could break it down piece by piece. Unfortunately, I'm just a person that enjoys movies. I'm not a guy that's super educated on on the history of this movie or, or, or what, what these things mean. You know, I watch other people for that. I watch Matt Colville for that when he does, like, the movie breakdowns and stuff like that, that he used to do. Um... So, I'm sorry if I'm just like the dialogue was great, and I don't understand what this means. I wish I could explain it. I I don't, um, and I can't. But I just loved some of the lines in here, and I'm like, man, I wish I knew what these words mean. I would love to bring some of them back. They could be something. They could mean something that's problematic, and I wouldn't even know it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, it's like quick Google search. Let's see. Is this, is this a good thing or is this? A yeah. Bad before thing? before I repeat this thing, I need to make sure it's not real bad. Um. Yeah. Uh, there's also some cold-blooded moments in here, like uh, yeah, where I mean, I'm just like they're pretty, cold. Like, 
Yeah, the tone is pretty like dark and cynical. There's a there's a scene where they're setting somebody up, and I'm not gonna use names so I don't spoil it to you. And the, this person is like knocked out on the couch, and he he wakes up, and he like looks at each character, and each character is like staring back at him, like that. In that in this movie was like one of the most. First of all, that's just fucking cold, and second of all, it was like frightening, like. You have to sit there and these people are looking at you menacingly because they, they're going to set you up for like all the murders and stuff and send you to the cops like terrifying. Like some of the some of the best like, oh, my God, if I was this dude and they and you're looking at it through his eyes. Right. They're showing you the POV of this character, showing you each person looking at this dude and, and they just all have this almost menacing look on their faces like. It's it's. It was, it's it was, it was it was a great moment. Like camera angles and things are so different in these types of movies as well. Some of these older movies. Um, yeah, like there was like a, a a moment like towards like I guess the endish right where they're like it's like pretty intense and then like the camera would like be on one person's face and the next person's face and the other person's face. It kind of reminded me of like you know the good and the bad and the ugly. When yeah, they're having a little showdown. They're like switching to everybody's faces and shit it was kind of like one of those moments at the end of the movie where, where they did that um, um and it was uh yeah it was, it was interesting yeah um another thing i know we said it with casablanca but dialogue is snappy it's quick they don't linger on it and let things like kind of it's like line after line after line after line but it's good it's not like uh, like in a bad way. Like sometimes you can say a line and let it linger, and, it, and it's great. They do that a lot in modern movies. But there's something about like it's it's almost like a verbal assault, you know. Like especially in this type of movie where there's an investigation trying to solve the mystery. Like, come on, you got to tell me quick. We're under we're under a we're under, the, the cops will be here any minute. We got to get all this out, you know, because that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Uh. Audio mixing is not the greatest. It was the fucking music was so goddamn loud when we started this movie up that I had to oh, turn that was, shit down to almost nothing. <laughs> it, was, it was it was quite loud. Yep. Yeah. Um, so it was a and it was just like, yeah, it was, ma'am. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to find the way, right right words for what I'm going to talk next, but like I'm, the character of Sam Spade is like such a complicated character because like he he believes in his. As we watch the movie, I'm like I don't know how much of a straight shooter this guy actually is. I don't know if he's going to be like a kind of a bad guy trying to get and well, sell and make a bunch of money in the Maltese Falcon yeah, until he, like the very end. Like, he kind of like yeah, he like accepts money and shit on the side. So you're kind of like, well, what's this guy's what's this guy's deal, you know? But yeah. But you at the end of the movie, you really see how strongly, and this is a spoiler because I, 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 I like a little a little light spoiler, um, because he is the the main character of the movie. You see how long how strong his moral character really is at the very end when he's like. Well, when you know what happens at the end, DT, which I don't want to spoil in case anybody watches the Maltese Falcon, like, yeah. despite what he believes in here at the end of the movie, he's going to do the the right thing because his partner, who he doesn't even like, uh, is was yeah. murdered. Like, um, it, but he has a very strong moral character that I have. He has to do something about. I find that super interesting. Uh, the character of Sam is, he's the chaotic good. If you were gonna put him in a D and D category, he's chaotic good for sure. He does a lot of planning on the on the and just in the moment and and does some crazy ass shit. But ultimately, deep down, he's a good character, a good uh, a good person for the most part. He also he does do a few shady things. Um, uh, but yeah, I strongly recommend you guys check out the Maltese Falcon. Take an hour and forty minutes. Go watch a classic. I know so many of you out there are like, it's from the nineteen forties. Well, how good could it be, man? You don't, don't, don't be blinded by your ignorance. Don't let Limiting the CG of today's movies limit your vision. 
Like, there is something to be gleaned from these old movies. There really is. Um, uh, this is a movie I would watch again. I would love to watch this again. Uh, knowing how everything kind of ends up and kind of watch and see if I can figure it out. Knowing and seeing little hints of things throughout the movie. Uh, oh, you've seen it, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's always interesting, like, rewatching a movie... And like catching stuff that you missed the first time, or you know, mm -hmm. like just because you because you, you've seen it, so now you, there are like less things for you to focus on. Because when you're watching it for the first time, you're kind of like have to look, look, having to look out for everything all at once. Mm -hmm. But like after you, you know, on, on the second or third time viewing something, you can kind of focus on like, oh, there's maybe something there in the corner, you know, that I missed out, or you know, some other things that were, you know you just didn't quite catch uh, right away because, you know, you were having to pay attention to the, to the movie and, and the story and what was going on and everything, but yeah. Yeah. And this is like the first noir movie I've seen in like forever. Like a very long I, time. Dude, I love me a good noir mystery movie, man. Mm -hmm. And like, and I, and we're not talking, and we weren't talking about like, we weren't, we're, we're going to be spoiling stuff, but this movie has a, uh, uh, not one, but two plot twists. Yeah. So, it keeps you yeah. kind of guessing to the end of the movie. Like, I really... Especially with... I keep talking about Sam's character. But, like, I never know if he's actually a good guy or a bad guy to the end of that movie. Uh, so it's, so, it's so cool. Uh, but what were you going to say? I cut you off. I didn't mean to. I apologize. Uh, no, no, no. no. That, that, that was just going to say, like, this movie has, uh, you know... Uh, I just I just love a good... I just love a good noir mystery uh, movie, man. Like, I... I, I want to watch more movies like this. You know what I mean? Like, I know we keep saying that all the time too, and 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 I feel like we've been doing pretty good. Like I I know yeah. that for me, I've been doing pretty good at my goal of watching more more movies this year, uh, and more classic movies and all that stuff too. And I just I want to keep that up because yeah, I mean stuff like this, again like, just seeing how stuff was back then and 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 you know how you know actors would would act in in in, in this time before the CG and then you know having to be buff as shit stuff, mm -hmm. you know, kind of came into play. And then just like, you know, again, I mentioned earlier at the, at the up top that like, this is a world war two movie, you know, like, you know, it, or, or and what I mean by that is like, it's not a movie about world war two, but like, it, you know, it was made during world war two. Like, yeah. I just, I just find it fascinating how like, you know, st stuff was still going on in the midst of this world war that was occurring at the same time, you know? And uh, yeah, I mean, we you know we love the poster. We love uh, it's it's always good seeing more like also like you know Humphrey Bogart is a classic you know actor and and, and whatnot. And always good seeing it's always good seeing more of more of the more film more of his filmography and more you know just more movies in general from from back then and and yeah and then like I just yeah I, I want to see more. I, I love noir uh, things, so I, I want to watch more of that, more stuff like that in general. You know, yeah. And always and I, like, no, please continue. No, like it just like, like even when I when I played like a fucking LA no LA noir for the first time, you know. Like, yeah. Oh, man, like, I wanna I wanna get I wanna get into more shit like that, you know. Like I remember like when I played that for the first time like ten years ago or whenever the fuck it was. Yeah, it was like ten years ago that I played it. Goddamn. Mm -hmm. But anyway. Yeah, like just it, it just it kind of like reinvigorates like your your like want to check out more stuff like this, you know. So I I, I love it, you know. It's yeah, it's great. It's one of the reasons I'm glad we're doing retro rewatches once a month now, because we can throw in uh, more movies, which is something we want to do anyway. Um, yeah, but it's also great to see. characters that are so different from modern day movies like the character of sam spade like who is the chaotic as fuck but also a character like uh joel cairo who is like kind of got this weaselly like uh air about him that he's kind of like a little weaselly guy um uh Casper Gutman, like that, the fat man character, that is like kind of like a. It's just really cool to go back and like 
if I were to write a modern day book or movie, I would look at all this old stuff and be like, from my giant repertoire of awesome characters, who do I want to steal parts from and make them into something new? Like, do I want Sam Spade's uh, chaotic planning and, and like, uh, uh, the character in Casablanca's uh, moral fiber and, the, you know, this, that, mm. and this, and that, and, and build a whole new character out of it, so... Like, a lot of the times, a lot of modern movies, to me, and th- th- this is a shit on modern movies. I love modern movies. A lot of the times, yeah. the characters can be, uh, can feel very similar at times. And, like, for me to go back and see something like this, it's super different. Uh, and, uh, and just something new to learn. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. So yeah, that's the that's the Maltese Falcon guys. I don't think I have more to say on it than that. I say other than go check it out, like uh, go watch it. It's on HBO Max. I, I, it's such an old movie, but by God, it's it's so worth watching in my opinion. Um, two two thumbs up from my ratings. Hey, I also enjoyed it. I I, I think that uh, if you're somebody out there who, um is a little resistant to uh, watching a movie just because it's black and white or, you know, it's not a movie that was made within the past five years or whatever. I think you're just kind of, kind of majorly limiting yourself, you know? Going back and, and watching movies that are older, um, not only can you find some like enjoyment through them, like like we have, but like you can also kind of see what influenced and what inspired. Yes, some of your favorite movies and directors, and you can kind of see like, oh this one movie that I like took a particular or shot this scene or took a scene from this other movie and kind of gave it its little homage, you know, to, uh, you know, to this one movie that I like. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, it's just cool checking out film history, man. It is. I agree. So, yeah, it's just, it's good, yeah. I look forward to the rest of our uh, our retro rewinds. I believe uh, since this was Josh's pick, I'm I'm up next month, so we'll we'll stay tuned and, and I'll let you guys know what my pick is for that. Oh, I can't wait! But, Already uh, excited. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 very <laughs> uh, I'm very curious and excited to continue this uh, film journey that we're on this year, man. Because I, yeah, I've been been wanting to. Want to keep up with more more movies and, and and check them all out and I actually like I'm super interested like how many movies like per month I'm gonna be watching like at the end of the year once once it's over and we're like looking back at our like yeah at, at this year you know and we're like mm-hmm. yo how many movies did we watch this year I'm be like I'm curious how many I watched per month you know because I mean I, I know it's not gonna be like oh I watch 20 movies every month or whatever you know. Yeah, it's 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 gonna be it's there's gonna be some variety, you know, but I'm gonna see like what types of movies and like how many movies I watch from all that's gonna be super interesting to me, man. So, uh, but yeah, the Maltese Falcon definitely go check it out. Uh, go watch basically go watch more movies with posters like this one is what, is what we're trying to say. <laughs> yeah, if you see a, if you see a cool looking poster like this, a story as explosive as this blazing automatics. If you see something like that. A poster looking like this, go watch more movies like that. Uh, Truth. Look at that. If you see that a movie, if you see that a movie has a poster looking like that, check it out. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be, edu- it's gonna be good. It's gonna be educational, you know. So definitely go and give it a shot, man. Go, go, go! Diversify your, 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 your films, your film watching, you know. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think that's all we got to say about it, huh? Yeah, that's that's gonna do it, guys. I think that's gonna do it for the show, uh, as well. So thank you all for hanging out with us. We'll go and do our goodbyes, Daniel. I'm gonna throw you up. Here you are. You're on. Hey there, everybody. 
Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Um, appreciate you all being here for that. Uh, coming up, we are planning on beating um, Dying Light. Uh, hopefully that'll happen. I, I, if I had to imagine, probably within the next couple of days, maybe if we go through it quick enough, maybe tomorrow. So come check us out live over on our channels. Uh, you can check out Josh on his channel, me on my channel. It's going to be down here. You can see that right there. Um, yeah, and then after that, we just got we got more more things more things coming. I, I got a lot of story. I got a lot more story games planned for this year. I want to get back to playing more of those, as you know. Uh, I have been doing it with uh, uh, Sunset Overdrive and now Dying Light. But um, yeah, uh, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching or listening. Those of you out there, uh, we will see you all next time. Have a good one. Bye bye and peace out. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this episode of the Clockwork Cantina. We appreciate all your continued support for the show, and I hope that uh, I hope that we sold you on the Maltese Falcon and you go check it out. Um, make sure to come to our streams this week as we finish up Dying Light. I'm pretty sure we'll finish it up. Um, we'll probably talk about it on the next podcast if we are finished up, but maybe give some closing thoughts on it, perhaps if it's done. Uh, um, uh, coming up, uh, just you know, come by the streams. Check out the YouTube channels for our reaction videos to to the trailers and stuff. I'm doing, I'm trying to do more of those. I know DT's been doing those. Uh, so go check out the YouTube channels with all that info stuff on the on our on our sidebars here. Um, once we're finished with Dying Light, I need to figure out what I'm going to play next. I'm thinking about going back to Horizon. Zero Dawn, because I was watching, I wasn't watching some people, I was watching a podcast, and they were talking about the new Horizon game, uh, Forbidden West, and what they said made me really want to play it. So, um, uh, I may be doing that. That may be what we do. I, I need to go and finish that and play all, all the DLC and all that stuff, so. That that would be a fresh run from the beginning of the game. Um, oh, yeah. On, on, on my stream. Uh, so until we see you again, guys, get Get your vaccinations. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Um, you know, do make smart choices. Uh, be, be healthy. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.